Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another YouTube video guide. Today I'm going to show you the extreme high budget version of my Redemption Sentry Spectres. If you're looking for the low budget version, there's a link to the thread in the descriptions below. And I'm also having a link to a video where I show the build without using cluster jewels at all. So it's very cheap. You can play this build soul self found. Compare just because of the easy access to stupid crafts in Harvest, I decided to go pretty crazy with this build. And it is doing about 100 million Shaper DPS. And that is not inflated numbers or anything. It is straight up doing 100 million, about 104 billion Shaper DPS. So I did this uh, with a squishy version, but I decided to go for Energy Shield to have a better EHP pool, which I would consider being a much better version than going life. But if you want to go life, you can do so. And you can also drop your uh, damage by a lot of damage and increasing your defense by running some, something like Bone Offering with Glancing Blows. So I'm going to show you a Conquer fight on Drox uh, real quick. And then right after that, we're going to do uh, the um, Awakener 8 Serious fight. So I'm going to talk about the build during the gameplay footage. And then when we're done with the gameplay footage, I will show you how to craft every single piece for this character, which is uh, very expensive. Just have that in mind. So basically, when it comes to clearing, I'm using my helmet with GMP and um, Awakened Fork. I would argue for Pierce to be more comfortable to play with till you get an awakened fourth gem but again if you're going for high budget currency should not be an issue and there's a couple of tweaked mechanics we're using for this uh one of them being the anime guardian allowing us to go for three curses so basically what i'm doing it with the curse way wise is that i'm cursing with proj weakness and uh, frostbite myself with an awakened curse and hit allowing me to do two curses However, the third curse is applied with the Anime Guardian by equipping him with Windscreen Boots that allows me to have a, an additional curse by him being applied. Which then means that him applying an additional curse allows me to have three curses. Because he applies one and I'm applying an additional through Awakened Curse and Hit. So I have a level 12 Elemental Weakness through cor Corrupted Implicit pair of gloves for him. And then... Um, then I am using uh, two curses myself. So that's how we do the curse approach with this build. And um, that's about it. Uh, I am Elemental Equilibrium with Armageddon brand. And I have spec'd... What's up with the game now? There we go. Uh, I have spec'd Avatar Fire, allowing me to trigger Frost Bomb, which will also grant me 25% cold composure. Exposure, not composure. But exposure. So, this is the clearing DPS using... Awakened Fork and GMP. For endgame bosses, I switch over to using damage of full life with LB damage with attacks, um, which is Awakened, Death Mark, and Ray Spectre. So now this build is doing about 100 million Shaper DPS, and this is Drox. As soon as they start attacking. Oh, did he really go into Mutiny Face? That's interesting. There we go then. Okay. So that's the DPS you get from um, from that approach. There's a few other things you can do with the uh, Guardian to do more damage, but I like to keep the Guardian alive, so I'm using a Mask of the Stitch Demon Helmet with a rare chest piece with high HP, percent life, chaos resistance, and Benchcraft 8 HP as extra energy shield. So that's the way he is designed. So the expensive parts with this build, uh, there's a few different things you can do in terms of damage. Like I mentioned with the defense and offense, you can change your shield around to use Glancing Blows and Bone Offering. Currently my shield packs uh, Elemental Damage, Global Fizz, Tier 1 Coal is extra free hate chaos, plus 2 minimum frenzy, plus 2 minimum power charges with a shitty mana region roll. Now you can get double damage in there, it doesn't give me that much. A uh, double damage roll on this would give me about 5 million Shaper DPS, which I will never notice. Uh, because I'm doing 104 million, so five more here and there, I will never notice the difference. However, a shield like this could be better if you don't have the elemental damage and you go for the influence modifier to get percent cold damage, and then obviously no mana reading to have double damage will give you the availability for this build to pack about 10 million more Shaper DPS if you want to go nuts with a shield as well. The way you craft this shield is basically you get a minimum frenzy charge shield and a minimum power charge shield, awaken all of them together, and whatever you get, play around with the harvest craft to get global fist, cold is extra chaos, uh, if you're able to do so, or even the cold damage. So that's the way you craft the shield. I'm going to show you awaken eight real quick, and then we're going to go into details of the entire craft process of every item this build is packing. I'm not going to use the flask on the first couple of phases. Just going to kill him by putting up some EE approach and then death marking him. 
and then he's dead. That's the first phase. And then we have to wait for everything. Bit dull. Um, the belt is the best damage providing belt you can use. Darkness and Throne for um, for um, Spectre builds. Obviously there will be a video in the description below to explain all the numerical values and how to calculate the damage provided and how to craft uh, jewelries when it comes to the belt itself for Darkness and Throne. So I'm going to just leave that in the video instead. That was phase two. And gloves, pretty simple. Best damage gloves you can get is uh, Grip of the Council. Buy them for about one and a half X or something. That's very cheap. And here's phase three. That's phase three over. Um, weapon, very simple. Four socket resonator to get the plus two, uh, one to spells and one to minions. Uh, you could get better weapons of this, however, if you have a socket, a soft fix slot open, the best mod would be to get uh, Hatred have better aura effect, but it's easier to hit the uh, Intimidate, which is a little bit less damage, but still a lot of damage in general for, for this build either way. So this is the last phase, as soon as you start attacking, he's dead. Uh, the problem with the DPS in general when it comes to some of the builds is that you have to, you have to be in a position where the enemy has to be attackable, and then after he becomes attackable, you uh, your minions will then turn around and then actually start hitting him. Uh, so you don't get this insta-kill on a boss, you actually have to wait for the boss to be attackable, and then the time before your minions actually start attacking them. So now we're going to go into detail with all the crafting of how to get the high-budget stuff sorted. Um, so the weapon has plus one of minion skills and plus one to minion skills, sorry, to spell skills. This is done with a four socket resonator using a jagged. Shuddering, Metallic, and Corroded Fossil. Uh, that gives you a an average of one every five tries, I believe it is, to get plus two. You can do this uh, with something like a Fractured uh, Alva Dropped uh, Wand with um, the Fracture on the Minion Damage as well as the Double Damage of Minions. Then you can't get the Influence, so I would say that something like what I have is better, but instead of going for the Hunter Intimidate, you want to go for generos sorry the Hatred Increasing Effect, but it's much, much harder to hit that. Because you want to have can't, um, can't roll Caster Mods or something like that, and uh, or Spell Mods, and then you have to uh, slam it and pray you hit it. It's very hard. However, the Intimidate has a very high probability of hitting, and the damage difference is rather small. So that's why I went with the Intimidate. And then obviously Trigger where I have the Frost Bomb for Exposure, Desecrated Flesh Offering, which you can change for Bone Offering for the sake of defense. Uh, Mention Gloves, they just purchase them. The belt, you just purchase it and watch the video in the link in the description below to know exactly the details about this and how you craft these with Harvest Crafting. Boots are very simple, straightforward. You get an Elder Pair Glove, you use Shuddering Fossils as well as Bound Fossil to get plus movement speed as well as let Race uh, Spectre Gem, and then Harvest Craft the remaining shit that you would want. The shield, as mentioned, just awaken orbit and then use Harvest Craft to get as much damage out of it as possible. I'm using an Ult's Uprising with Discipline. You can use Hatred, which will allow you to use an Aspect, which will give you a lot more high-end DPS. The problem with like Aspect of the, the um, Spider is that you only get that damage based of how many webs are on the enemies. And because we're doing over 100 million Shaper DPS with this build, it doesn't matter. Um, I get a pair of Elder uh, Boots, my bad. The problem is that if I use that aspect, the boss will already be dead before I even reach the second uh, web on them. So I didn't feel that was needed. So instead I went for Discipline All, which is a bit cheaper. And you will allocate the Grave Pack for this build. Um, the rings are very straightforward. You can use Redeemer Rings, uh, which will allow you to get up to 25% minion damage. But then you don't get percent energy shield. Instead, you can purchase the highest active level dropped from Delve, which is 83 and they, the minion damage roll from the delve drop it goes up to 35%. And if you then make sure you sort that and block all the um, all the suffixes, in this case I bought ones with intelligence and I got dexterity, uh, you can then use a crusader slam orb instead, which grants you percent energy shield, and then just do remove add defense until you get flat energy shield with uh, percent energy shield. That's how I crafted both my rings. However, this build is a bit starved in terms of resistances as well as dexterity, so you have to try to balance that on the rings. Um, you, I think I would have been better off going with two stone rings. I would have had less of a headache trying to sort my resistances. And the other piece would be the chest piece. For ES, you want to have a Volregalia if possible. 
and you want to have a delve drop modifier with a plus number of maximum specters. That's how you get five specters out of the build. And then I slammed the hunter on a suffix open for increased effective offerings. Other than that, just get some rest from the from the uh, harvest crafts and get more energy shield. As you can see, I only have eight energy shield from a hybrid roll, so I still have to get that up to get my EHP a bit bit higher. So I'm not really done with it. And then the big boy. Um, the way you craft summoner helmets is very simple. I have a video for that on my YouTube channel as well. However, this one has the Sock of the Gems deals 30% more elemental damage, which is the Glyphic Fossil. The problem with this is that this craft is very, very expensive. The enchant is not sorted yet. So what you do is you purchase a uh, Elder or Shaper Bone Helmet, 86 item level with the enchant you want. And then whatever uh, helmet with the other influence, you'll awaken all of them together and then you use fossils. And you want to use Glyphic and Bound and Sanctified Fossils. I do believe I have them so I can show them actually. Uh, bound Fossil, Sanctified Fossils because you get a higher level of modifiers. And then you want to use the... Um, uh, you, well, you want to have 30% quality from Perfect first. And then you want to use a Glyphic Fossil. And uh, I don't think I have a Glyphic. Uh, glyphic gives you... One out of one of the corrupted essences, which is either insanity, horror, delirium, or hysteria. Now that means that one out of four, every time a time you use the glyphic fossil, would hit the correct mod, and the correct mod in this case is the thirty percent more elemental damage. However, it still has adds these pool of mods to the pool, and bound fossil increases minion damage as well as aura mods. And one of the corrupted essence modifiers gives on helmet plus level of aura gems. So instead of having every fourth try, you will have every 10th to 12th try will give you the correct essence, sorry, the correct essence mod from those fossils. However, you're not done with the, with the helmet craft until you hit the correct essence with level three or three levels of socket of minion gems, as well as 18 or 20 minion damage, which is very expensive to get to. But again, this is the high budget version. Once you get those mods, you will also want to have a prefix open or something you can play with. In this case, I got uh, some hybrid roll, which I removed to get energy shield, because the crafted energy shield is one energy shield less than a tier one flat energy shield on a bone helmet. And then you want to have suffixes available to, because it's only going to be two other suffixes. So either a cold rest or other modifiers that you can get rid of, so that you can augment the caster mod from harvest to get the spell crit, and uh, remove add cold or aug cold for the hypothermia suffix. So that's how you finish the helmet. Flask wise, uh, Total Faith, really, really good. The damage doesn't apply to the minions, but the, but the Consecrated Ground does, and the increased critical strike chance against enemies on Consecrated Ground does affect every, everyone attacking that enemy, including your Spectres. And then I'm using a Rumi's just to get a little bit more defense out of this build. I have a Quartz Flask and a Jade Flask. Uh, Jewel-wise, we are using Unending Hunger. This is only for smoother clearing. Doesn't give you any damage for the sake of uh, bossing. You can get a better Jewel for that if you really want to be picky. I am using an unnatural instinct over here because it's again very high budget. This gives me the energy shield I want from here. It also gives me um, a line spirit for a little bit extra damage and mana, which does affect my um, if you went for arcane will to get you even more energy shield. I didn't feel like going that. The other notes is CI, uh, Lord of the Dead, the arcane focus, elemental equilibrium, as well as necromantic ages, of course, as well as picking up some dexterity if needed, energy shield, death attunement. Avatar Fire only if you're going with the Frost Bomb strategy. Sell a Toth, and then it's just one more extra jewel slot. In this case, I'd use this one to help my resistances. And then it's going to be the cluster jewels. And I'm going to take them step by step because they're a little bit tricky to explain, but the crafting of these are very, very simple. I'm using three cluster jewels, and they all have Feasting Fiends, Renewal, and Vicious Bites. I'm going to explain this very, 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 very simple. Uh, as I can, I guess, at least. So, in PUEDB, on large cluster jewels for minion damage, you want to reforge items with a crit roll. By reforging with crit, there's only one critical strike modifier available on large cluster jewels like this, which will be Vicious Bite. So, you're guaranteeing Vicious Bite has to be item level 75 or higher. So, you guarantee Vicious Bite by reforging a crit roll. And then you want to make sure that the suffix doesn't really matter. If you get something you can use, great. But the prefixes has to be prefixes you can either work with or it's a bust. And when I say work with, I mean that if you get something like mana, which you can't work with in Harvest, then it's a bust. If you get something like um, increased effect or damage, you can't get rid of them. Same thing there. However, anything that gives you like minion physical fire from race and pillage, you can remove that by removing fist or fire. 
You can also remove um, the Fissure Chaos from the Skeletal Atrophy and Rotten Claw's physical attack as well. And uh, Call to Slaughter is speed attack and caster to remove that. However, if you get Renewal or Feasty Fiends, then it's great, but you want both of them. So then what you want to do is augment the life modifier, because both Renewal as well as Feasty Fiends has the life tag. And because of that, you're then able to remove add life till you get Renewal and Vicious Bite together with... with sorry, remo remove add life to get Renewal and Feasting Fiends, because you already have Vicious Bite. So that's how you craft all three of your, of your Cluster Jewels, which is not very hard to do. Um, just a bit pricey. It could arguably sometimes be better to just purchase a jewel with them. You have to check the prices for those. Next step is medium cluster jewels. Now you want to go for the medium cluster jewels with non-curse aura effects. And that's because we are looking for precise commander and vengeful commander. This is the easiest jewel to craft ever. And the reason it's the easiest is because we can guarantee precise commander by reforging recruits, similar to how we did it with the large cluster jewels. And with the medium cluster then, guaranteeing that you have um, that you have your precise commander which is right here the only thing you're looking for is that the suffixes should be something you can make use of so in my case i have something here like with dexterity and the resistances resistance is strength the strength is kind of useless for me but i still needed up to 111 so that was useful for me uh, up here i got uh, intelligence and which is an energy shield plus resistances here's a double rest and here I got double rest and strength and resistances. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the second prefix either doesn't exist or is uh, based of an element. And as long as it's based of an element, it's all good. Because what you want to do with Vengeful Commander, which has tag of both cold, fire, as well as lightning, you can do any sort of element on that second prefix will make this possible. And it has the highest uh, mod value as well. If you look at Vengeful Commanders, it's 960, whereas the other ones are to 180, some up to 480. So basically, if you hit something else like a defense modifier, like self-control, uncompromising, or sublime form, you just remove uh, defense. Make sure that the item has uh, full suffixes by augmenting it at an element. So if we take an example of uh, this jewel right here, which has uh, fire resistance and intelligence, this means that... If I have an empty prefix, I could augment cold or lightning. And cold or lightning would put it in this position where I would have the highest chance to hit the mod I want. If you get unlucky, you hit a rarer mod, which would be pure commander or winter command. And there's no other elemental prefixes, which means that I would then just remove and add cold to guarantee myself to get vengeful commander, which has the highest odds of hitting, which is very easy on an item like... Um, like this one, which has a fire and lightning resistance roll, which means I would just do remove add cold till I hit the mod. I think I had another double rest here, right? So in this one has cold and lightning, so I would just do remove and add fire till I hit it. So it's very, very simple. And then in cases where I had dexterity and lightning rest, uh, I believe... That's the wrong one. And this one had fire and intelligence. I believe this jewel had the uh, the guile one. This is Fire Intelligence, and it had the uh, Pure Guile, which is a cold tag modifier. So in this one, I just kept re-rolling and remove cold, add cold. And I actually, all my cluster jewels, all six medium hit on the first try, because the Vengeful Commander has such a high weight compared to the others. The um, small clusters, I would argue for it to be just cheaper and more smooth to just purchase the ones with energy from not and just try to find something with uh, whatever mods you would like, and then you can just harvest craft the fourth mod if you want to. But that's the recommendation on that end. Um, skill tree wise, pretty straightforward. Mr. Sacrifice, Mind of Regression into a Natural Strength, as well as Commander Darkness. And uh, I believe that covers all the details except the gems in the train, so, uh, in the gem, uh, gear. So, um, Pantheon wise, actually. Soul Lunaris, upgrade it so that you have avoid predictors have chained. It's very crucial to avoid, and then you can do chain maps without risking to die all the time. And then I went for Ignitions. Uh, you can do whichever so, uh, minor pantheon you want, but um, Ignitions is uh, pretty annoying for this build, so I decided to go for the Soul of Abrath. But uh, the chain one is very crucial for this build in terms of survivability. Gem-wise, like I mentioned, uh, Frostbomb for Exposure, Desecrate and Flesh Offering, or Bone Offering with Glancing Blows if you prefer that. The gems in the helmet, preferably you want your helmet to have two white sockets you want to use death mark because that's the best single target uh, damage increasing uh, support gem for specters with ray specter of course 
Damage of full life, as well as awakening elemental damage attacks, is the best support gems you can use for single targets. For clearing, I switched that for GMP and Awaken Fork. And that's the best, in my opinion, for clearing. If you don't have Awaken Fork, then use Pierce. But again, for high budget, there's no excuse to not spend two Exalted on Awaken Fork. The dash with second win in the Convocation is a really nice uh, mobility approach, but also the cooldown from your Convocation being so low is very comfortable. Um, the um, links with Karen Golem, I put on Feeding Frenzy to make sure I have Feeding Frenzy buff consistently up. Using Animate Guardian, uh, which I mentioned the gear for earlier, with a Meat Shield to make sure that he's close to me, so I get the Feeding Frenzy, sorry, so I get the, the Fortify. But also, when I Convocate, it puts my minion and my Spectres around me, and I'm able to make sure that he has the, um, the approach of um, the Crit Multi that he provides from Kingmaker to my Spectres as well. Uh, I'm using Hatred with Awakened Generosity, together with Skitterbots with Bone Chill. The interaction here is that Bone Chill increases the cold damage enemies take based on the uh, uh, chilled effect provided by the main skill for this. So the chill effect provided by Skitterbots is augmented uh, with the Bone Chill, and that threshold is then added as cold damage, increased cold damage taken by the enemies. It's a very nice combination. And then obviously Hatred, Awakened Generosity for more damage, obviously. And the last links is Discipline or Vault Disc, together with Armageddon Brand. These, this doesn't have to be linked, by the way, if you want to go for Unset. So I'm using Armageddon Brand with an Awakened Curse in it, like I mentioned before, earlier in the video, with Frostbite and Projectile Weakness, which is more damage than Assassin's Mark, and then I have a Portal Gem. You can skip the Frost Bomb and Avatar Fire and use... Um, um, Elemental Army for your Guardian, for example, or your Golem, which will provide exposure, but not as much exposure. So that's another way of approaching it. And I do believe that covered everything for this extreme high budget build. And I just want to mention the fact that I tried to craft a helmet like this last league, and I spent about 200, 250 Exalted, and I didn't even come close to finishing it. And I think I crafted this for like 10 Nexus League, maybe 15. So crafting this league can allow you to do pretty crazy items and pretty crazy builds, which is why I took the opportunity to do a 100 million shape DPS build. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it. Um, I think I covered everything. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you want to check out the low budget builds, they'll be linked in the descriptions below as well. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay safe and keep rocking.